Random thought. Mm-hmm. Is a chair still a chair, even if there's no one sitting there? <laughs> yes, it's still a chair if no one's sitting there, and it's still a chair if it's folded up and used as a weapon. It's still a chair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm just Terrell. You ever been out somewhere and overheard two people having crazy conversations? Well, we are those people. We've been having these conversations since college. Yep, it's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast, episode 136. Be sure to like, subscribe, rate, and leave a review. So, everyone's been talking about this. I was in St. Lucia when this thing happened, and we're all talking about it. In the airport, you can see people talking about it. <laughs> On the resort, you can see people talking about it. On the flight back, you can see people talking about it. And the memes have been nonstop. And of course, what mm -hmm. we're talking about is the Montgomery Brawl, a.k.a. the Montgomery Tea Party, a.k.a. Did I see the latest one you sent me? Fade in the water? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the jokes There's right merch. themselves. There's merch, <laughs> right? It's, it hasn't been a full week, and there's already merch that you can buy online about yeah this event about the Montgomery riverboat brawl. The crazy thing about it is one person put up, um, uh, um, put merch up and had it spelled wrong life, every voice and sing. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And quickly changed that so they could sell the merch again. And he had put lift every voice and sing. Cause that's what he meant to put, but obviously typing fast, trying to get the merch out, everybody trying to capitalize on this. And what is this we're talking about? Take us back to this, um, to, to, to this point real quick, because this, this was an interesting and captivating moment in time. Yeah. So Sunday night, I, I, I start seeing this all on Facebook. So I went down a rabbit hole of, <laughs> video after video after video and analyzing video footage. So you had this uh, riverboat that was trying to dock. Mm -hmm. You had some people that had their own pontoon boat that was in the way. Mm -hmm. So one of the workers on that riverboat, they, they get a, he gets off and gets onto the dock and he's trying to talk these people into, you know, trying to find them. He gets on a PA and eventually they show up. He's trying to tell them they need to move their boat. They're probably out on the boat, you know, drinking what everybody else does. They're yeah. like cussing at him and altercation happens verbal at first. Mm -hmm. And so he's trying to get them to, to still move the boat. All the people on the boat are yelling like, hey, let's go. And there's another group, another party that's supposed to be getting on that boat next. Right. Now, how so, do boat cruises work? Exactly. Right. Now, so obviously there's no audio of the altercation. But when I saw the uh, the brother on there, he starts doing like this. I'm like, okay, it's getting real because he's clapping. <laughs> he's, he's pointing. He's clapping. You see this? Oh. Da, da, da. <laughs> and so all this, however long this takes, you know, a couple minutes of, of this whole conversation. And then at some point, one of the, the white guys that had the pontoon boat just rushes and punches uh, the black dude. Mm -hmm. Black dude takes off his black baseball cap, throws it up in the air as if this is the bad, bad signal. signal. <laughs> this is the bad signal. And... They get into it. Mm -hmm. Now it's one on one, and all of us know one on one, okay, no big deal. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, that guy, one of the guys, either friends, son, don't know the relationship, but he's younger. He comes with a flying knee mm -hmm. and jumps in and starts also fighting the black dude. Another yeah. white guy comes in. So now there's three white guys jumping on one black dude. Mm -hmm. Of course, everybody on the boat's raising hell. The white guys had two women with them. They're trying to pull the dudes off. And then another black dude comes down. He sees wait, it. Wait, hold on, he hold jumps. on. Because you said something there just now that we're not just going to glaze over. Because you said the women jumped in. Because what I saw when I watched this was mm -hmm. exactly as you described until you got to the part of the women jumping in. Right? Yeah. Because I saw the brother coming down. As you're about to get to the brother racing down. He's like, nope, can't jump down from here. I'm going to tear my knee up and go one more. Right. <laughs> hey, yo, he I thought about it. Too. He I'm thought like, about it for a second. He's like, I'm like, yeah, but that was nah. not. <laughs> he like, I'm too old for this shit. Let me keep going. And I, I applaud that brother for running all the way down because what I saw, which is what he saw, was five white people on this one black man who was on the ground getting his ass out b right mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. what he saw running now but you said something different just now what was yeah, that so i analyzed that video a whole lot and to me the two white ladies were trying to pull their men off of this dude mm. that's what it looked like to me they weren't because i was looking like are they swinging are they hitting on them 
No, they were pulling, trying to pull the guy away. But of course, the dudes are drunk. They're bigger, stronger, but couldn't make it happen. So the, the first brother that comes down, and A, what I respect about him is he jumped down to stop it. He just yeah, didn't he, jump he in He didn't swing. start swinging it. That, no. You know what? So you are absolutely, so two things here you're absolutely right on, right? And this, this is where you see the people who are like, let's de-escalate. Because you're absolutely right. When After you said that to me, I went back and looked at it again, and I'm like, now I know the Mandela effect is, is, is there. People swear that Richard Simmons used to wear headbands. He never did, right? <laughs> it's the mm-hmm. Mandela effect. I swear I saw those women swinging. But as I look again, I realize that really trying to break this up, just like the brother did. I saw the brother do that first. He wasn't trying to swing on them, but he's like, hey, get up, get off, break this up. Yep, and one of the, the first guy that threw the punch is a black guy when the, that other brother showed up. Mm-hmm. He came and all but you know, tried to swing, and the brother was like, no. <laughs> and the dude stopped. Yeah. You know, and so they're that's just he re- separate it. His drunk eyes got focused and said, God, yeah. dog, that's a big dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I didn't know John Coffey was on this deck. <laughs> so, uh, so while this is happening now, so you have all the people on the boat mm-hmm. and they're screaming and it's, it's, it's a lot of us that's on this boat. They're screaming, like, hey, somebody help them. One of the employees that was on that boat as AKA Aquaman, he <laughs> jumps into the water and swims over to try to help. That was my second hero in this story. Cause <laughs> as we watch it, I see this, is that, is he, is somebody swimming? And then he yeah. gets up on there, kicks his shoes up and go, he was fully, oh, he actually jumped off the boat. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, what yeah. the hell? So he jumps off, he gets to the dock, by then the fight's over. Mm-hmm. But of course, as anybody be, you're, you're you're mad, you're hot. You got jumped mm-hmm. and you're ready to throw down. Mm-hmm. As all this is happening, the boat finally gets close to the dock where other black people come off. Mm-hmm. And so now it's like, okay, now Avengers we have a group. assemble. Avengers assemble. <laughs> and so they go down one part of the dock to where that pondu- pontoon boat was. Mm-hmm. And three black guys are like, they're ready. They're just like, what's up? I saw you just jumping on my man over here. Why don't you bring that over to us? First things first. They didn't just walk down there. They didn't run down there. They skipped down there. You knew it was about to be a problem. Like how you said, when the brothers started clapping and then the other brothers started skipping, skipped to my loo, and you, it was on. <laughs> you knew. Yeah. Th- there was no de-escalating that situation at that point. No, no, there wasn't. So they go over there, uh, maybe half a second of words, mm-hmm. and then it was throwing hands. And they- Your guess as to what asked. the words were. What's up? No, yeah. What's up now? <laughs> What's up with all that trash you was talking back over here? What's up so now, partner? They throw, and it's just a swarm, and they throw hands. All those white dudes there got stomped mm-hmm. and beat. And then, did you see the one who dove into the water try to avoid the ass whooping? No, I didn't oh, see him. There's a video of one who was like, yeah. oh, hell no. He dove head first into the water. His girl came over there, come here, baby. Let me get you back out. <laughs> so, what you're saying is, Aquaman saw Aquaman and was like, I don't want any part of that. <laughs> yeah, I hope he don't chase me in here. You know, well, he went with the old stairs like, oh, black people scared of water. Let me go in here and say. Yeah. <laughs> so you have that fight that breaks out. And as that's all but over, I think two other white guys come out and they're starting to walk towards them. All of a sudden, five black men turn around and look, start quitting. They try to run <laughs> off. They get jumped. They get whooped. Yeah. Then back to the other part of the boat or the, the larger boat another altercation happens Mm -hmm. there. So it was all this fight. And that's the one where everybody's talking about the chair. Right. Where brother has the chair and he's hitting. WWE If you really think about it, if you watch it at first, you're like, ooh, ooh. But if you really watch it, he didn't get any good hits with that chair on the man. Mm -hmm. Because the man was putting his hands up to block it. So all that noise you're really hearing is just the chair hitting the guy's hands. So it was really 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 like WWE. Because WWE, when they're doing that, they're actually hitting the hands of the of yeah. the person. They're blocking the shot so yeah. you're not giving them a concussion. Exactly. But the oh, one that probably did get a concussion <laughs> was the white lady that was that got beat up by the, the two sisters. Now, that fight that happened, mm-hmm. she also was trying to pull the dude off. Right. And as she's trying to pull him off, another brother was punching her man in the face. Mm-hmm. Two sisters saw this. They posse up. Wonder Twin Powers activate, went around, and started whooping this woman and stomped her down. They so the did. woman just got her butt kicked. Yeah. So she's just trying to get up off the ground. And next thing you know, whop, <laughs> right upside the head with the chair. 
the thing about it, as I'm watching it, there's a different angle from on the boat with with that fight that you you sent to me. I think it was the NBC um, one that they had, and it looked like there was also a guy that threw her down to the ground in that same space as well, right? But then mm-hmm. you're right. As she's sitting back up, here comes the chair. I mean, that brother at that point, I don't think he saw anything, anybody. As he's swinging his chair, he's like, I've seen this on WWE. I've always wanted to do this. This is my chance. Everybody gets this. I'm surprised he didn't hit any of the brothers or the sisters with the chairs. Like that chair was like, no black people shall be hurt. And he was just swinging it. But well, when he hit her with the chair, I went, that's right there is where all of this turns, right? And immediately yeah. it was because the cops, what they do? They snatched him up immediately because now he's swinging a weapon and assaulting women. And that's where I have the problem. Assaulting the woman. Well, I think that everyone should be lucky that they weren't light-skinned or mixed. Because mm-hmm. I think that brother was just looking for anybody <laughs> whose skin was lighter than his was going to get it. So he was just swinging. So if you was in there mixed. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you like You might want to stay off to the side. <laughs> Uh, now, nah, girl, your hair is a little bit too straight. Mm. <laughs> I swear, it's a perm. Stop it. Yeah. So I'm with I'm with you on this whole thing. I I look at this from I have two perspectives on this. Mm-hmm. Partially, it's hilarious. Mostly, it's sad. Mm-hmm. What makes it hilarious is a the commentary that you hear from the people that are recording it and what they're saying. Boop. Yeah, that was <laughs> that boy just jumped in the water. Get up there, young buck. Get up there, young buck. And then you have the other person that's giving the sound effects of the woman. Bop, 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 bop. There's a video where they made music to that one. And so that was funny. I think these guys got what was coming to them. Did now, it. what what makes it all sad to me is a number one. I don't condone violence mm-hmm. of any kind, but right. I get it. Sometimes violence has to happen. I don't like how these dudes were beating up the women. Mm-hmm. Um, the women that were on the first altercation, when the, the that big fight started, when all the brothers front showed up to the small pontoon boat, mm-hmm. they went to try to stop and pull their guys out. They didn't go in there trying to swing. Mm-hmm. They were trying to pull their guys out. And there were brothers that were grabbing them by their ponytail, uppercuts to the face. Mm-hmm. One of them threw the girl into the water. Right. I don't appreciate all that. I mean, and imagine if the other way around. That, right? that part right there, because we would not stand for if it was a white man mishandling a black woman like that. And 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 as look, as a husband, as a brother, as a son, as a father, I never want to see a man putting his hands on a woman. Period. Nope. Not at all. Um and it'd be different if those women were like throwing blows mm-hmm. and they were trying to fight them. They weren't they were trying to survive because they were getting stomped. Mm-hmm. Right. So I don't appreciate that. Um, and then what I don't like about this is uh, a lot of the re- public reaction to it. To me, this isn't something to celebrate. This isn't something that we should make merch for. This right. isn't something that we should say this is black history or right. somebody's doing this for the ancestors. No, because this is not what the ancestors wanted. This is not what Dr. King wanted. You know, And I get it. Sometimes violence happens, violence happens and sometimes people deserve it. Mm. And these three dudes... Mm-hmm. deserved it. Oh, they deserved but it. They deserved it. They deserved the stomping that they got, but I just don't like how it it's turned into like, this is a something that we as black people should be proud of. I, I don't it, like that. It also becomes a rallying cry for the other side as well too. And I think, I think right. that becomes, especially as, as you break it down and in, in this perspective that you just brought in the sense of, and I think it just really changed the way I watched the video when you said, no, they were trying to break it up because initially as I'm watching it, right? And I see, I, I applauded the sisters for jumping in. And again, I'm still going to applaud them because they don't know. I'm, first look, you look at it. These women jumping in here. These brothers can't hit these white women. I got you. And they came in, right? And that's the way it, it, you'd, you'd expect that, right? But on further review, upon further review, um, we're, caught, we're throwing a flag on the play because they were just trying to help break it up, right? They didn't They didn't want their men in this, this thing either. Um, now, could they have done more from the very beginning? Probably so. 
Probably you so. know your man's a hothead. You know he can't handle his beer. You know when he's drinking that much Coors Light, that much Budweiser, because they don't drink Bud Light anymore. You know, the rednecks don't drink Bud Light anymore, okay? So, because of that whole, um, that, that whole campaign. But now, you know what's happening. You knew this. And if you just stepped in earlier, a lot of this could have been avoided. And one thing we can say about this, alcohol is a hell of a drug because that's what started it. And you can't blame everybody else for their reaction to what you started. Your women should leave you for what you put them in because that ass whooping they got is on those three men. Well, it's, it's something that we always say when we watch police brutality videos. Mm -hmm. If they would have just complied, <laughs> there would have been an issue. Yes. If they just would have moved the boat, everything would have been fine. It's only had to move the boat to the whole other side of the lake. It just moved the boat. And so it's this not, big boat can get here. It's not like they didn't know that this man worked there. Right. This man was in, he was the co-captain of the boat. Yeah. You know he works there. He's in the friggin' uniform. There's no man dressing like that on purpose. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It wasn't like he dressed like he was there for the party. He wasn't one of the party goers. Yeah. Comply. Like you said. Is, is that what they yeah. always say? If you just just comply, just just do what they ask you to do. Yeah. And you know, I, I've been trying to follow everything that's happened since. There's been some arrests made. Mm -hmm. Um I, I don't like people's names or I don't in like public that because, of course, that's going to create I worry more drama. That. But I something really I've seen people that. looking for is, is there a GoFundMe for these people that, for the employees that got fired that were right. jumping into the fight? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't contribute to that GoFundMe because Why not? you made a choice. Mm -hmm. You made a choice, right? And I respect your choice, but you chose to lose your job because there's no way you can keep your job after that. Right. You work there. If you if you work security at Disneyland and somebody attacks Mickey and you and a bunch of security guards stomp them and all their friends and beat them up outside and, and kick them out the the park, you're gonna lose your job. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just how it is. Right. You can't do that. Okay. And again, I respect what they did, but you made a choice that hey, I'm losing this job. I'm gonna do this. And they then, weren't eh. thinking that in the moment. Let's be honest. They in the moment thinking. they weren't thinking about their job, but it's just that's just how it is. You can't do that. And had they been thinking about it, they would have known, take the shirt off first. The shirt that says crew, take it off first. <laughs> At least take, take that off, off. Because here, here's, here's the, you got to think long term. Mm -hmm. You could say, okay, I'm jumping in to help this fight. I'm going to lose my job. Okay, big deal. For the company standpoint, they're going to fire you because they're waiting for the lawsuit to happen. Yes. And it's they're coming. waiting for mm -hmm. some, and that lawsuit's going to be millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Millions of dollars. And that could impact whether this riverboat keeps going or not, mm -hmm. you know, because when's the last time you were on a riverboat? It's not like everybody does it, <laughs> you know, all the time that they're just raking in the money. <laughs> well, maybe in Alabama, there were a lot of people on the boat, a lot of people waiting to get on the boat. <laughs> well, I wonder who's going to be on the boat this weekend because I'm... <laughs> everybody coming with their own chair. Everybody just coming, just, yeah, just, I'm just here with the popcorn, just watching. I'm just going to see what's going to happen this week. <laughs> Who knows? But I mean, I, I really think overall, it's it's a bad look. Um, again, I totally get and respect what these brothers did. Um, I don't like the, the guys that were hitting the women. Um, I think this escalated way bigger than what it needed to be. And these people should have just complied and moved their boat. And none of this would have happened. But I really don't like how people are trying to make this into something like we should be proud of. Um, I do want to point out as everybody's making these memes and I have to give credit to my guy, Alton Walker, um, because he brought up the fact that John Cram was the first folding chair inventor back in 1855, a brother, by the way. All right. <laughs> and I, just and I see it. we're, I see we're still using his invention. <laughs> Not for the intended purpose, but we're still using it. So, thank you. I, I just want to point out there's a little bit in there, man. Just so, just so we know that you know, hey, there, there, there was some there's some history, there's history there. We have, we have a history of folding chairs besides the backyard parties. Um, as we dip into the mailbag, man, got this one from uh, LCD, and this is from our last episode, episode 135. Um, 
with our whole discussion on Lotto and the traditional man, right? She says, I can't believe you took this entire topic and turned it around on women. The original topic that Lotto was commenting on was about what men expect from women. Men are saying that they want a traditional woman. And what she was trying to say is, if you want a traditional woman, then you need to be a traditional man. That is not what is happening in most cases. So she continues to say, I am single in Los Angeles, so I see it often. That was the main reason for my divorce. My husband wanted me to cook and clean and take care of the kids. All he had to do was work and come home. I do want to pause here and say, um, as I was reading this, my wife was laying next to me, so I read it aloud to her. And that's when she went, oh, hell no. <laughs> I just want to point that out real quick. Because I was like, uh-uh, mm-mm. <laughs> right? So... She continues, LCD continues, he didn't even clean the tub after he took a bath and I was required to pay half of the bills and mortgage. Actually, I think that's the point. My wife said, oh, hell no. <laughs> so uh, she says, after the divorce, I found out that is the mentality of all the men I meet. Men have unrealistic expectations from women. Unfortunately, Lotto is too immature to provide grown-up examples to support what she was trying to say. She actually was using stupid examples to show how stupid the scenario of a traditional woman can be. Her message went left, and y'all went left right along with it. The topic was about men and what they expect, not women and what they will, and I think she meant to say, accept. It's mm -hmm. another one of my grammar police joints. I'm just going to say that. Well, I say L LCD first off. Thank you for Indeed. the email because Indeed. hey, it means you listen to us yes. and that's great. Yes. And you actually email us and anyone else can too. RTRTPod at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you and we will respond mm -hmm. to those emails, either email directly or in this case, we're going to talk about it on our regular show. Um, did we go left with it? I'd agree with that. Definitely did. But here, here was my point. I think I made this point when we were doing this uh, actual episode. This is one of those situations where I think people have to communicate their expectations, what they want mm -hmm. in a relationship before right. you get into a relationship. Mm -hmm. So if if you're if you meet a man and his expectation is you pay half the mortgage, you pay half the bills, and that's not what you want to do, don't do date's it. over. Exactly. We don't date. You mm -hmm. know, if you meet someone like I can to your situation with the husband that wouldn't clean the bathtub, if I go to a woman's house for the first time and it's dirty, I'm not dating her. <laughs> and not because I expect her to be clean. It's just you invited me over to yeah, see all this. You knew I was coming. <laughs> yeah, so you knew I was coming. And so you allowed me to see all this nastiness. Wait now, a minute. What if, what if, so, because we've talked about this before. You go in the bath, you go to a woman's house, the house is clean, but you say, can I use the restroom? You go in the bathroom and hopefully it's not the half bathroom downstairs. You go into the main bathroom and what do you do? You peel back that curtain just to see is there a ring around the, the tub, curtain. right? Yeah. yeah, but I, I look for that because it's not to say that I'm looking for a woman that can clean for me. Right. I just want to know what level of clean you are because I'm at, on, on a 1 to 10, I'm at an 11. Yes, you clean. are. <laughs> and I need to make sure that you are at least a 9, you know? And so if you're not, there's no point in us dating. Except for the shoes. I mean, and I'm going to walk away. I, I can't, because you can't, you, you, here's why I think this is so important. You can't get into a relationship with somebody and be dating them and they're living a certain way. Mm -hmm. and then expect it to change because y'all had a ceremony and signed some paperwork mm -hmm. that something's going to be different. I think whatever you're looking for now, focus on that in the dating aspect. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe are there unrealistic men that are looking for this traditional woman that's going to do X, Y, Z for me? Yes, mm -hmm. there are. But are there women out there who will do those things? Yes. Mm -hmm. They just got to find those. But I think for women – Maintain your high expectations. I don't, I personally don't give a shit. Whatever you're looking for, that's great. And whatever you look, and I've said this before, your expectations can be as high as you want. You're yes. minimizing your pool, mm -hmm. but if that's your expectations, great. But don't get with somebody and then be disappointed because you didn't have those right conversations before y'all got into a relationship or got married. Okay, but at the same time, and this is this is where I think women find that problem, right? Is because if a woman says to a man. This is what I expect. Sometimes men can get in their feelings and, and try to say that woman's expecting too much or wanting too much or is a gold digger because she wants this standard. But here's the difference. And, and here's where I think, guys, we got to really take some accountability in this space, right? Because if that woman is already living at this level, 
okay? If she's at this level right here, there's no reason when she starts dating you, she comes down here. Right. The only thing is either maintain or uh, uh, add to, okay? Right. And really, maintain is the bottom. That is that is the base. You don't you don't even want to maintain. You want to exceed. You want to raise. Because right. just like you want a woman to make you a better person, you got to also make her a better person. But her expectations are this. If she eats at Nobu on her own, at least once a week, don't be mad when she wants to go once a month and you pay. Because that's what it is. That's the expectation. You can't say, I know you're accustomed to $800 and $1,200 shoes that you buy yourself, but I'm only going to buy you these $80 shoes. No, <laughs> that's not the woman for you. So to, to your point of what women want the expectations, they can put it out there. But guys right. also got to know, like, I, this woman's not in my league yet. I'm, I'm, I'm not ready for this, for this woman. You right. got to be ready for that. So... Let, let me talk directly to the five guys that follow us on our <laughs> that's, that's what I was just doing. I think we just yeah. lost one, so it's only four yeah, now. Let me just talk to, <laughs> and I think, ladies, share this with what I'm about to say. Share this with many men, that as many men as you can. Here's my thought process for guys, and this is what guys need to do, because I agree with you. Men need to step up. Men should date like they're looking to buy a home. Mm -hmm. When you're going to go buy a house, what's the first thing you got to do? What do you qualify for? Oh, Some of oh, you I was are not going to say check out the neighborhood, but go ahead, continue. Well, well you got to find out what you qualified for. It doesn't matter the neighborhood. Who used to live here? <laughs> yeah, if if you are if you are only qualified for two hundred thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars for a mortgage, then that's your options. Mm -hmm. What is within this price range? Don't go right. out shopping for the seven hundred thousand dollar home when you can only be qualified for two hundred thousand. Right. If you're not qualified to to own and you're only able to rent then those, that's your dating parameters. Who can I date that's within this, I'm gonna be able to rent stage. But you can't go out there and to your point, expect a woman to come down mm -hmm. from her standard of, and I wouldn't say cost of living, just her standards for what she has. And when she doesn't or looks at you sideways, she's wrong. No, she's not wrong. You're not ready. You went out of your price range. Mm -hmm. You were shooting your shot way too, too big. You swung for the fences. Right. Don't, you need to bunt. <laughs> until you can work yourself up to start going for some home runs. But, but get on base, right? <laughs> Find you somebody that's great to be on base with. And then after that, you build yourself up. If that relationship, if she's building up with you, great. Mm -hmm. If not, hit that home run. Yeah. But there are a lot of dudes who that's their problem. Is they think that because they are attractive, maybe they have a good title. Um, it's not because they have money. Because you don't hear the guys that have money complaining. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they have all the options, but you have the guys that don't have money, but yet are still attractive. Mm -hmm. And I think that could be the difference. Right. Imagine. And I bet that happens a lot for ladies where they meet a guy. Wow. He's really good looking. Duh, duh. He's broke as hell. But and so then he's going to give her a hard time because I he doesn't want to. She doesn't want to <laughs> date me because do you look know how good I look? She's like, yeah, I do. But I like to eat at Nobu. As mm -hmm. you said, I'm assuming that's an expensive restaurant in Atlanta. Mm hmm. Got it. Not just, so, not just Atlanta, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Okay, wherever it is, I'm, I've never heard of it. Um, but men shouldn't do that, and I think that's the problem. Don't go after women if you know you can't afford it. Mm -hmm. If you know you can't afford to be with that type of person, don't date them. But don't fault her for not liking you mm -hmm. for that. But again, I still go to before you date, ask those questions. What do you expect? Yes. Do you expect if I expect you to be home? Because uh, I would be upset about this happened to a friend of mine in college. In a relationship, everything was great. As soon as they got married, she said, oh, by the way, I don't want to work. I want to be a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> uh -huh. And he was thinking that we're going to be this power couple right. that's going to be making money because they met in college. Well, they didn't have that conversation. Right. And, well, they're still together, but still. <laughs> Communication is key. They always talk about it. And um, in that case, I will say, LCD, um, you are absolutely right. Lotto went left and we went left right along with her because have you ever heard us before? This is what we do. <laughs> this is to the left, do. to the left. <laughs> <laughs> when have you ever heard us just decide to tackle everything straight on and be like, all right, that's it. No, we're at least going to take, we're going to go somewhere else with it. And that's, uh, she did it. So we decided why not to, um, and we'll do it again. We're happy that you listen. We're happy that you sent that email. And like um, Terrell said, you can always email us RG rgrtpod at gmail.com I would say hit us in the Instagram DMs but um, if you have and you haven't gotten a response it's not because we're ignoring you it's just that we're still locked out of the account um, Google Authenticator still has my thing and I can't 
get in. I got to find a way to get back into the Instagram, man. It's been horrible. <laughs> but you can message us directly on IG at Yanni Rude at Just Terrell. There you we go. can respond that way. Yeah. <laughs> we love emails too. They're just traditional with the Pony Express emails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm Just Terrell. Make sure you follow us at Yanni Rude, at Just Terrell, and at RGRT Pod. Yeah, send us some of your random thoughts or some of the bullshit you find on the internet. We'll talk about it on the show. It's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Cheers. Cheers.